Hello! In this episode I would like to build a thermometer which I can connect to a computer for data logging. I need such a thing for my experiments uh, with uh, precision measurements. For example, uh, characterizing a voltage reference or a precision resistor or something like that it is necessary to also have measurements of uh, the ambient temperature. There are many ways to do this and after some research I decided to use these Silicon Labs chips SI705X. There are several versions uh, with different absolute accuracy. I already bought a couple uh, of this version SI7051 with absolute accuracy of 0.1 degrees C and the resolution is uh, one hundredth of a degree. This should suffice for my purposes and the chip itself here is a sensor, no probes needed, which can be advantage or disadvantage depending on application and point of view. I think it's fine for my application. Just uh, let the thermometer sit next to a device under test. These chips have I squared C interface and they work from 1.9 to 3.6 volts. And uh, look at them, they are tiny surface mount packages. So I'm going to use this 8 pin adapter. Uh, the chips have 6 pins, so 2 pins will be unused. So here is one of the sensors mounted on the adapter board. This is 80 Mega 328P, which is probably an overkill for this purpose. Here I have a small OLED display, which is not really necessary, but I think it will be nice to have a display, not just a black box. And this is a USB to serial adapter. Here is a working prototype showing temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. This is not an ideal setup because of two things. The first is different interfaces. This display has an SPI interface and the temperature sensor has an I squared C interface. It would be great to have one common I squared C interface so the circuit could be slightly simpler and would take fewer pins from the microcontroller and I could use a smaller microcontroller. I have already ordered an I squared C version of this display but it will arrive maybe in two or three weeks. The second thing is uh, the operating voltage. The temperature sensor needs 3.3 volts, the display needs 3.3 volts as well. The microcontroller does not care, it can run from both. And the USB to serial adapter, as I understand, can also work from both. And it provides the 5 volt rail from USB. So it seems I could run everything from 3.3 volts, but my programmer does not support that. And I have already ordered another version of this programmer which has a jumper to switch between 3.3 and 5 volts but it will arrive as well in two or three weeks perhaps and if I did not want to modify the software anymore then I could disconnect the programmer and uh, uh, rearrange the circuit to run from 3.3 volts only but I don't want to do this yet I think I will wait for both the display and programmer to arrive and then I will work on another version. So I'm running the microcontroller from 5 volts and here I have LM317 to produce 3.3 volt rail and I'm translating both SPI and I squared C interfaces to 3.3 volt levels. The SPI interface for the display I'm translating like this using simple resistor dividers because this needs to work only one way 
uh, such a simplistic approach works just fine. And the I squared C interface I am translating using these two uh, MOSFET based level shifters mounted on a tiny board. And they are arranged like this. Let's look at the software. This is to support I squared C. This is the graphics library. This is the display library. This is to define the display and pins it is connected to. This is the I squared C address of the temperature sensor, which is fixed. This is to keep a moving average of the last 50 samples to make the reading on the display less noisy, so it wouldn't jump up and down very quickly. Here is the setup procedure. This is to initialize the serial interface at this speed. This is to initialize the I squared C. This is to initialize the display and clear it. This is to display the model and the firmware version of the chip, which can be obtained from the chip itself. So I print SI70 and then the given model, which in my case is going to be 51. There are two firmware versions according to the data sheet, so I print version 1 or version 2 accordingly, and then display all this and hold for the duration of this loop, which is to fill in the initial samples for the moving average. Uh, this takes 5 seconds, 50 samples times 100 milliseconds between the readings. Then we have this main loop. This is to read the temperature from the chip and it, it is converted to uh, Celsius there. Uh, here I put the sample into the array and advance the index. This is to start the index over from zero when the maximum is reached. This is to display in uh, Celsius. This is to get the moving average and I'm using font size 3 here. And then print space and C. And in that space I draw a tiny circle for a degree sign. This is to display in Fahrenheit. This section can be removed if not desired. This is the conversion formula. And I'm using a smaller font here. This section is to handle requests from the serial interface. If any data is available, I read one byte here and treat it as a command. And I support four commands lowercase c and f to get the latest reading from the chip um, in Celsius or Fahrenheit um, respectively and um, uppercase c and f to get um, moving averages. And uh, the command is displayed in the uh, left bottom corner of the display using the smallest font and uh, if uh, an, an unknown command comes in, then it is printed in hex. And uh, this will flash in the corner of the display for the duration of this main loop, which is 100 milliseconds. And this is very handy to see what command was that for debugging and troubleshooting the serial connection. Uh, then we have this um, procedure, uh, how to read the temperature from the chip. It is read as byte 1 and byte 2, and then they are combined into this 16-bit value. And according to the data sheet, the two least significant bits are zeros there, which leaves 14 bits. And this also determines the resolution. Uh, so this is the conversion formula given in the data sheet. So the smallest increment of this value is 4 
and if we plug in 4 into this fraction uh, this gives us something around one hundredth of the degree uh, here it is this is our resolution in Celsius then uh, this is the procedure to get moving average from the array uh, this is how to get uh, model from the chip uh, the chip has uh, 8 bytes of uh, so-called uh, chip ID and it can be read in two pieces, 4 bytes each so here I read one piece, byte 1 to byte 4 and the model is byte 1, so I don't really need other bytes and this is how to get the firmware version So now I am reading the temperature from my computer every 5 seconds so watch that lowercase c appearing briefly in the corner of the display and now I will turn this off and on again and we should see the model of the chip and firmware version for the first 5 seconds Here I wrote a small script in Octave, which is a free equivalent of MATLAB and this is to read the temperature through this serial port every second and plot it and here is the plot so far so we are reading around 26.3 at the moment and now watch what happens when I briefly touch the sensor as you can see it responds very quickly so the temperature jumped from 26.3 to about 28.3 and now it cools down so I am quite happy with this version the next steps would be perhaps as I described before a simplified version with I squared C interface only and running from 3.3 volts only and also I need some sort of enclosure for this which I did not find yet I really hope you like this little project if you did don't forget to give it thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thank you very much for watching bye